Welcome to Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 2 for June the 11th, 2017. We're in Unit 1 today, entitled, Call to be Strong. Our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Wrestling with Doubt. Our devotional reading comes out of Psalm 83, verses 1 through 12, and verse 18. Our background scripture comes out of the book of Judges, chapters 6 through 8, and we will be studying today from the book of Judges, chapter 6, verses 11 through 18. Our key verse reads, When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Judges chapter 6, verse 12. Uh, from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to understand that God's criteria for choosing leaders different from those set by humans. Number two, re-experience a time of feeling unqualified for a task because of perceived inadequacies in pedigree. And uh, the third aim is to wrestle with the appropriateness of voicing doubts about personal capabilities and requesting signs in the 21st century context. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our discussion. The first outline is entitled, The Angel of the Lord Appears. The second outline is entitled, I Will Be With You. And then the third outline is entitled, Is This Really You, God? We certainly thank and praise God for this great opportunity to uh, come to you again uh, from our Sunday School lessons. We have been in the book of Judges. Uh, we began a four-week um, uh, study uh, dealing with the Judges. Uh, we hope that you will uh, study these uh, scriptures and this book with us and so we may be able to learn a little bit about our history, uh, at least the history of Israel, the history of God's people. I want to read a little of the uh, biblical context for this lesson, and, and I want to read a little bit from our lesson standard, and then we'll get to uh, our outlines. After Deborah and Barak's leadership led Israel into the defeat of their enemies, Israel enjoyed 40 years of peace. Would it last? No, Israel would turn from God again. So again, God had to punish his chosen people. God allowed the Midianites to oppress Israel. The Midianites' tactics led to widespread fear across the land. The Israelites took to living in caves and strongholds. It was against this backdrop that we are introduced to Gideon, another reluctant judge. Gideon was Israel's fifth judge. What do we know about Gideon? Well, his name means one who cuts down the enemy. God had already chosen Gideon from birth to lead Israel. What is amazing about the meaning of Gideon's name is that he was filled with much self-doubt. And then just a little bit from the lesson standard today. Uh, God allowed the uh, uh, the two others um, talking about the Midianites and the Amalekites, uh, sons of the uh, children of the east. You can see reference in Judges chapter six, verse three. Uh, the Midianites were descendants of Abraham and Keturah, his wife, after Sarah died. That's in Genesis chapter twenty-five, verse two. And then when Moses fled from Egypt, he settled in Midian and married the daughter of the priest of Midian. You can see some reference in Exodus uh, chapter 2, verse 15, verse 16, and then verse 21. And then I want to read a little bit of this uh, talking about what had happened uh, after Deborah and Barak. Uh, they were able to uh, subdue uh, the Canaanites. Uh, so it had been 47 years uh, with the help, with God's help, 
uh, that they subdued the Canaanites and then they had 40 years of peace uh, you can see some reference in Judges chapter 5 verse 31 and then followed by seven years of oppression uh, that's Judges chapter 6 verse 1 so uh, the approximate date for the events of this lesson has been determined to be about 1175 uh, BC when we started studying in the book of Judges we just wanted to make a few points about it uh, particularly that it is history uh, the author is unknown um, and we also want to make note that Israel is in a covenant relationship with God at this time uh, and so as we get into uh, some of the issues uh, particularly why the Lord was allowing enemies uh, to oppress them if you go back uh, over in the book of Deuteronomy I believe chapter 27 um, 28 and, and you can get some insight into what the Lord had uh, previously told them about their obedience uh, to that covenant and so uh, Israel found themselves uh, over the course of history disobeying God and so uh, here we have another situation and we should note that the system of the judges uh, though they uh, uh, had some success um, uh, under different judges who uh, governed at the time uh, Israel was never consistent in their obedience to God and so um, as we will look in this lesson today or at least last week we talked about Deborah uh, but after she died, as we pick this lesson up today with another uh, judge coming on the scene in, in terms of Gideon, uh, that the children of Israel had slipped off course. So we want to keep those things in mind. And so God's gauge or his uh, measure of punishment uh, in, in cases like this was to allow their enemies uh, uh, to oppress them and to uh, uh, buffet them and and what they would do Israel they would cry out to the Lord for help and so the Lord would deliver them and then they would repeat this cycle of disobedience again so we want to uh, start today with our first outline the angel of the Lord appears this is taken from Judges chapter uh, 6 verse uh, 11 through uh, 13 the Bible said the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to Joash the uh, Bezrite, uh, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon he said the Lord is with you mighty warrior. Verse 13 Pardon me my Lord Gideon replied but if the Lord is with us why has all this happened to us and where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt but now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of of Midian and so what I'd like to do is go over to Deuteronomy uh, chapter uh, 28 uh, Gideon asked a very important question uh, in terms of what they were going through. Uh, he wanted to know why this had happened. Uh, and so in the 28th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, if you have your Bibles, let's go down to verse 47. And you can read all of this, but this is relevant to, to his question. The Bible says, Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart for the abundance of everything, therefore you shall serve your enemies, whom the Lord will send against you in hunger, in thirst, and in nakedness, in need of everything. And he will put a yoke of iron on, the neck, on your neck until he has destroyed you. Verse 49, the Lord will bring a nation against you from afar, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies, a nation whose language you will not understand. 
a nation of fierce countenance, uh, which does not respect the elderly nor show favor to the young, and they shall eat the increase of your livestock and the produce of your land until you are destroyed, and they shall not leave you grain or new wine or oil uh, or the increase of your cattle or the offspring of your flocks until they have destroyed you. And then verse uh, 52, they shall besiege you at all your gates until your high and fortified walls in which you trust come down throughout all your land. They shall besiege you in all your gates throughout all your land which the Lord your God has given you. I want to stop right there. So uh, what is happening to Israel at this time and the question that Gideon is, ans is asking uh, the angel is in the law. It's in the covenant. It's in the details. Uh, uh, it's in the policy, if you will, uh, uh, of their relationship, Israel and God. And they have broken that agreement through their disobedience. So what is happening to them is nothing new uh, or something that God had just uh, uh, decided to do at that time it had already been stated to them uh, but the problem was uh, that Israel was the problem uh, and so the the angel here uh, if you go back to the very uh, beginning of the sixth chapter uh, uh, when this situation had happened uh, 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 the the children of Israel uh, as I said earlier, they were accustomed to calling on the Lord in times of trouble. And so uh, at the time of the meeting between Gideon uh, and this angel, Gideon was threshing wheat, which was not an unusual thing to do. However, it was where he was threshing the wheat that is key. Under normal circumstances, a thresher would work from a hilltop, making it easier for the wind to blow away the chaff. But because of his fear of the Midianites, Gideon was threshing in a wine press. Wine presses of Gideon's day were often hewn out of a rock. So quickly the angel of the Lord shared with Gideon how God was with him. Although he was working under a spirit of fear, the angel of the Lord still called Gideon a mighty warrior. Isn't it wonderful how God sees the best in us when we do not? Gideon could not believe his ears. So, if this were true, Gideon wanted to know why Israel was being oppressed by the uh, Midianites. Uh, he wondered how God had delivered Israel from Egypt so miraculously would abandon his chosen people now. And while the, uh, the NIV text uses a lower case for Lord, in verses 13 and 15, the King James Version and other translations uh, use a capital letter. The Hebrew word for Lord is in fact referring to, to God. So we get some uh, perspective here. The Lord had given uh, Israel rest, peace from their enemies under Deborah uh, on every side. And so... Uh, 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 as the children of Israel changed uh, and that's very important that, that uh, we need to take away from this lesson uh, one thing about God uh, he doesn't change but we do we change from uh, moment to moment uh, 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 at the bat of an eye we are with the Lord and then we are no longer with the Lord and then we began to suffer the consequences of breaking that fellowship with God and then we began to cry out so uh, what Israel is doing here is nothing new uh, for mankind but we want to appreciate the fact that they cried out to the Lord God was still hearing their prayers uh, in terms of, of, of what they were asking him to do in terms of getting out of trouble uh, with their enemies the um, uh, the Midianites and the Amalekites, as we read from Deuteronomy, they were stealing the crops. They were coming in and taking the food supply uh, from Israel, and, and Israel couldn't eat, and Israel couldn't feed their livestock, and, and so uh, they would subsequently die uh, if they didn't have 
food to eat but uh, but we want to keep in mind they were the cause of their problem and the question is asked here in the quarterly how can we understand what God is telling us to do and how can we know that it is God who is speaking in the first place that's a very important question I want to be able to uh, talk about that as we move into the next outline but 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 we need to know uh, the contents of God's word that's why I read Deuteronomy and there are other passages uh, uh, that that we look at if we study our Bibles but if we need to know the relationship the terms of that relationship that we are in with God and so uh, the Spirit of the Lord just reminded me uh, of how our tradition goes every first Sunday uh, of the month that we uh, issue the Lord's Supper and, and, and what uh, we learn from 1 Corinthians uh, I believe chapter 11 uh, Paul talks about let a man examine himself uh, what would you be looking for uh, if you do this well you have to look this examination needs to take place through the word of God we need to be able to examine ourselves based on what God has told us to do to see if we are in compliance with the terms of that fellowship. We do know uh, that sin breaks that fellowship. Uh, repentance restores the fellowship. And so what we are told to do during the Lord's Supper is to examine ourselves that we might be able to judge the body rightly. Now that's what the church does uh, uh, by its tradition. That's what we do. Uh, so it's very important that if we are looking at this question uh, honestly about how uh, can we understand, uh, we need to seek God's word. This is not something that... Uh, we need to try to wrestle with in terms of figuring out what God is doing or saying it's in his word and then how can we know uh, uh, that it is God who is speaking in the first place so we need a gift of discernment we, meet, we need to be able to know the difference but I heard Jesus say these words my sheep know my voice and a stranger uh, they will not follow but we're going to look at this again uh, that question we're going to look at it again uh, in 1st Corinthians uh, chapter 1 uh, but the second outline is entitled I will be with you uh, this is taken from Judges uh, chapter 6 verses 14 through 16 and again from the NIV translation the Bible says the Lord turned to him and said go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Verse 15. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh. And I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you. And you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. So Gideon is having an internal struggle uh, that's something that we all deal with uh, as Christians. Uh, he has doubts. He has doubts about uh, uh, his capabilities. Uh, he has doubts about uh, what he understands and, and, and how he is going to be able to pull this off. And and that's very important for us to realize and uh, uh, when God gives us something to do uh, he has to and will equip us uh, to do that so uh, it's very important that uh, the the angel uh, is telling Gideon here uh, to go in the strength you have uh, he's being called and he's being raised uh, to uh, to fight and to save Israel uh, at this time and so in verse 16 uh, uh, the Lord answers says I'll be with you what does that mean so we have the spirit and the presence of God accompanying uh, Gideon into this battle God is not sending him alone 
uh, uh, Gideon is not going alone. Uh, Gideon is going with the strength and the power and the assistance uh, of God himself. And that's very important. So in other words, there will be grace uh, following uh, Gideon in this endeavor. And we need to appreciate this about God when he tells us that uh, 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 that he is with us. Uh, that means that, that, that we can take confidence uh, in the fact that he will not leave us and he won't forsake us and he will help us and he will guide us through the things that he has given us to do. He will quicken us and, and strengthen us. But but I want to read this here in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1. I want to go down to verse 26 because this will help us to understand how God works. Uh, and and how God takes things that we would uh, 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 subsequently discard as worthless, and then He will use it uh, to His praise, to His glory, and to His honor. First Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty-six. Paul says, "For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, mighty, and not many noble are called." Uh, verse 27 but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty and the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are verse 29 that no flesh should glory in his presence. And so it, it's important to understand that we're not going to get the glory uh, because all of us uh, 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 have weaknesses and, and we don't have the abilities that we think we have, but it's by God's grace and his mercy. But I like what Paul uh, is telling the church at Corinth here is that not many uh, uh, so-called wise or, or mighty or noble, not many are called, some are, but not many, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world. Why would God choose that? Why would God choose something that to the natural eye is not effective? Because he's going to equip it. Uh, uh, the individual uh, for the purposes uh, that he might get the glory and then one of the things that we have to uh, become disciplined enough to say is that to God be the glory to God be the glory for all of the things that he has done uh, uh, it, it, and we have to be honest about this thing uh, 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 that uh, it wasn't in our strength or of our strength or of our knowledge or of our ability uh, uh, that we had accomplished a particular task. But we always have to give God the glory and the honor and the praise because apart from him, uh, Jesus says these words uh, over in the 15th chapter of the book of John, apart from me, ye can do nothing. So, so we are not able to do anything but uh, Gideon is asking a, a, a question here based on his uh, perception of his flesh and of his abilities. He's not thinking about that the, the great I am uh, 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 is going along with him. He's considering uh, himself uh, doing this of himself. And so the Lord is correcting him that I will be with you and you will strike down all the the Midianites leaving none alive so he's going to have enough power to fight and as we get a little bit further on to into this story we will see uh, but but we see uh, Gideon addressed his self-doubt uh, uh, Gideon wanted to know how he could save Israel so so he wants uh, the angel or the Lord to know that he's the weakest and, and, and that he's the least and that he's not significant enough to get anything done but God declares he still wants Gideon in this endeavor 
you know, God doesn't change his mind. And we've seen throughout history, we gave you some reference back over in Exodus uh, uh, that happened uh, when God called Moses. We have a tendency to back up, you know, when God calls us to do various things. And and we have to be encouraged today. Uh, this is the same conversation or tone, if you will, that uh, God had with Joshua uh, after the death of Moses, that he would he should be strong and that he should be courageous and that uh, he should not let the law uh, depart from him, neither to the right or to the left. But God says, take courage, you know, be strong. And he declares even to Joshua uh, that uh, he would be with him. So uh, uh, God wanted Gideon to understand that the empowerment of God's presence would be with him on the front line. And finally, uh, God told Gideon that it would be a total defeat of the Midianites. God is an awesome God and what he says it will come to pass. And we, we just need to get our minds around uh, the fact that God is sovereign and he won't change his mind. Whatever he has said, uh, he is able to bring to pass. But another question in the quarterly, have you ever experienced moments of great change and doubt in your life? If so, how did your faith in God affect your attitude uh, during these difficult times? And so we all have been there and done that. Uh, we all have gone through these things in life, but but there are a couple of things that, that we're going to learn, and certainly from God, as he is at the helm of our lives. Number one, we're going to learn obedience. Jesus learned that uh, uh, when he was on this earth, and he was going through, he was being tested. Uh, he learned obedience. And then the second thing that we're going to learn uh, uh, as followers of God is how to trust him uh, certain things are just not in your control uh, to be able to 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 handle and so we're going to have to lean and depend on God uh, to bring us through uh, and so being weak uh, being frail uh, having a lack or not being significant in this life these are things that God has already considered uh, when he chose you, uh, when he brought you out. Uh, keep in mind, do you remember when we were sinners and we were just going about indulging in the lust of our flesh and everything that, that came up evil we did, but somehow one day the Lord brought us out. Don't you see the power that he has? And now look at us today. That, that 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 we are have grown up more than what we have we we understand more than we ever have and so uh, God is doing that and so he's not done with you is my point but our last outline uh, is entitled is this really you God that's a good question judges chapter 6 verse 17 and 18 the Bible says again from the NIV translation Gideon replied if now I have found favor in your eyes give me a sign that it is really you talking to me please do not go away until I come back and bring uh, my offering and set it before you and the Lord said I will wait until you return. Do you remember when I said earlier about trusting God? That was one of the things that we would learn. Um, this will help us uh, because a lot of times we want a sign, and sometimes God will uh, uh, give you one, and sometimes uh, He won't. Sometimes you'll just have to trust the fact that uh, God has told you. Uh, to do something or God has said you know uh, some other thing in your life and we have to wait uh, on him to bring it to pass but I want to go uh, very quickly to uh, 2nd Timothy because this came up in the study 
uh, of, of this lesson. And, and, and many times uh, we are faithless. Many times we don't have a shred of faith active. Many times we are just doubtful and we are fearful and we don't believe and you know we go through these cycles sometimes but I want to share something with you that the Apostle Paul was talking to Timothy about 2nd Timothy chapter 2 I want to go down to verse 11 and the Bible says this is a faithful saying for if we indeed if we died with him we shall also live with him if we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. But look at verse 13. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He, God, cannot deny himself. So what I love about that passage of scripture is that when I'm weak, then I'm strong. I learned that even in my days where I am frail, where uh, my trials are, and my tribulations are, are getting the best of me and of my faith, you know, I, I have to remind myself that God is still faithful. And Paul says to Timothy, when we are faithless, and sometimes we think that, that, that when we don't have faith, uh, uh, certainly we need it in uh, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 but always remember God is going to get the increase when we are weak he's going to get the increase he's going to get the glory when we are, are strong he's going to get the glory so it's not depending on us but it's depending on God uh, uh, we are not and not able to trust in ourselves. I believe the Apostle Paul said that in Second Corinthians chapter 1. About things that had happened in his life. And he was talking about how and why those things were happening in his life. So that he wouldn't trust in himself. And so God will affect that in your life. But I, I want to encourage you with this. Because I know there are times where we don't have it like we should. Just keep that in mind. And Gideon is questioning God, questioning the angel here, questioning the Lord uh, uh, for a sign because he recognizes that he is weak. He recognizes that he's not sure. He recognizes the fact that he doesn't have the confidence in what he's being told. And so he wants to run and prepare an offering uh, for the Lord and the Lord says well you know will you go ahead and get your offering and come back and I'll wait for you so uh, even within God's multiple assurances Gideon was still not convinced Gideon did not necessarily doubt God's ability God had already demonstrated that he had been well able to prevail against Israel's enemies Rather, Gideon was greatly troubled about his self-doubt, looking from a non-spiritual viewpoint. I thought that was interesting, and, and uh, I want to lift that. Uh, uh, sometimes we are thinking too much uh, uh, out of our flesh and out of our own abilities rather than out of the Spirit of God. So Gideon could not envision any way that he would be successful in a battle against the Midianites. Have you ever had those situations in your life when it just looked hopeless and, and you were just at your wits end and you didn't know what to do and you had uh, maybe done all that you could do and it just seemed like this thing would, would not uh, work out but God just so stepped in on time and have you ever been rescued like that and so uh, uh, he asked God Gideon did he asked God for a sign so it would prove to Gideon that he really had favor in God's eyes the phrase found favor is a Hebrew saying which means to be an object of another person's favorable disposition or action or to be a recipient of another person's favor or kindness. Uh, further, Gideon wanted a sign to confirm 
that who he was talking to was God and not some imposter. Earlier I, I talked about that, about knowing God's word. And, 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 and a lot of times when uh, uh, we're hearing things and, and, and we can't determine, uh, uh, we need to be able to take what we're hearing to the word of God. Uh, we need to be able to try that under the 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 reflection of God's word, uh, uh, and and sometimes it it can be a little dicey because the devil quotes scriptures as well, uh, but the devil doesn't quote context of script of scripture. He takes it out of context because that's the liar that he is. But the truth is always in the details of what God intends to do and always look at the character of the instructions that you are hearing and that you you believe to be of God. Uh, try those things that you're hearing under the holy character of God. That's another way of discerning. Uh, truth would be another way. Uh, 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 context as I said would be another way and so we have to try these things under the character of God as well, which would be holy. We can follow things under the decency and order of God's word and of his character. So there are ways that we can determine uh, 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 how God is speaking with us. And, and let me just say this about that as a Christian. These are things that God has to affect in your life. You have to grow and learn his voice. You have to grow and learn uh, uh, his teachings. And this is what we go to Bible class and to Sunday school. We are learning attributes in addition to theology of God. That's what it's all about. And so we have to be able to know our Bibles and know how God is speaking. Uh, but I do recognize the fact that it is a present day issue for us not to know uh, and, and, and for us to have hearing problems. And so that hearing has to be uh, uh, worked on uh, by God so that you might be able to know uh, that it is him uh, who is speaking to you. But when we look uh, at Gideon's statement in verse 18, it, it appears that Gideon did believe that he was uh, talking to God. Uh, he wanted to leave to prepare an offering to God. So uh, we don't know what kind of offering uh, this was. Uh, but the fact of the matter is in this case the angel of the Lord is working with Gideon uh, to help him through this process and I don't want you to forget that because you're not alone in this and so when we don't have wisdom and we don't have understanding and we don't have uh, a discernment about these different things and have you ever talked to God about your hearing uh, and that you can't hear him and Lord help my hearing that I might be able to hear your voice and tune out all of these other things you know these are things that you want to take in your secret closet and you want to talk to God about these things as well as the doubts that 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 we have and the the fears that we have and and so uh, uh, because God wants us to be encouraged uh, by these things and so when you see uh, this, these inadequacies in your life then these are the matters for our prayers so I want to keep those things in mind but the last question here in the quarterly is considering today's lesson what are some strategies for dealing with doubt in times of difficulty challenge or opposition I hope that I've answered those for you today in terms of, uh, of giving you some perspective and 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 some assignments, if you will, that uh, uh, that we can talk to God about these things, and and don't be ashamed. That's another thing. Uh, uh, don't be uh, self-condemning about these things. All of us are on different levels in the body of Christ. I don't know where you might might be. You don't know where I may be. But God knows all of this, and God knows where you are what your strengths and your weaknesses are and he will develop you in those areas that you might uh, uh, be more effective 
in the body of Christ. And so uh, 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 some of these things that we need to have happen in our lives, they take time. Uh, and so when, when a child is born, it takes time for that child to grow up uh, until adulthood. But once that child comes to adulthood, the child can see, the child can hear better, the child can understand better. And so all of these things work the same way uh, in the body of Christ or in the spirit. Uh, and so we want to be able to uh, understand these things. Uh, but I believe Hebrews chapter 12 also will give us a perspective uh, that, that Jesus is the author and the perfecter or the finisher of our faith. He uh, starts it, he initiates it, and he is able to bring it uh, uh, to maturity where it should be. And so that's where Gideon is uh, in his life at this time. Uh, and then uh, part two of the question here in the quarterly is what did you learn to apply to your daily life from the way Gideon handled his self-doubt so I hope again that I've given you some perspective uh, on dealing with these things in your life because uh, we none of us have arrived uh, none of us have graduated we're still uh, uh, Paul said these words uh, Philippians uh, chapter 1 verse 6 he says I'm confident of this very thing that he God that began a good work in me will perfect it unto the day of Jesus Christ so if you're sure uh, that the process has started in your life by God in other words that you're saved uh, uh, then just know that he's going to bring that thing to where it should be so we can take courage and confidence in the fact that God would not have started something in your life and not have the power or capability of, of finishing it. Keep that in mind. But uh, our closing prayer offered in this lesson says, Lord God, give us the confidence to answer your call. Help us, Lord, to overcome our self-doubt and other fears. We trust in you that if you make a promise, you will provide the provision. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is a beautiful lesson, and I hope that you will join us uh, in, in continuing our study in the book of Judges. Uh, this is history, and uh, what we know about history, uh, it either will help us or it will hurt us if we don't learn uh, from the, the mistakes uh, as 1 Corinthians chapter 10 helps us to understand about Israel. We need to learn from the mistakes. Uh, that they made with God uh, and not being consistent and so we need to pray that we would be focused enough to stay the course and remain faithful to God to the end so until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again we say God bless you <music>